Hi guys, the other DM named Matt here, and today we're going to be making some trees for D&D and Wargaming. First off, you're going to need some styrofoam. You can find this at any dollar or craft store. It usually comes in a cube or a sphere like this. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is some branches, and you can just find these in the yard, and if you want, you can dry them in the oven. I chose not to, and I haven't seen any effects of that. Uh, you're going to need something to cut the branches with, so I chose some basic snips. And after that, you're going to need some washers, and these are used to base your trees. So try to find something that your branches fit right in the middle. It'll make it a lot easier. All right, and next you need a hot glue gun, paints of your choosing, and some flocking. And you're going to need two types of flocking, and I'm going to go over how I made this in the video. First, you need some coarse flocking for the leaves and some thinner flocking for the grass. So you're going to need some paint brushes. You're going to need three types of paint brushes. I'd choose a very wide one, uh, a smaller one for some details, and a garbage one that you can use with glue. Next you're going to need a knife, some tacky glue or white glue, some polyurethane or a squirt bottle, either is acceptable, and a ruler or other prying tools. Alright, let's get started. The first step is to take off any paper or plastic that came with the styrofoam you bought, so anything that'll get in the way while we're cutting or breaking it apart. Perfect. Now you're going to need to cut it and break it apart, but you don't want a clean cut because that won't look very much like a tree. Trees aren't very angular, so you want to start a cut using your snips or preferably a knife and preferably less dangerously than the way I did it and get enough of a gap that you can snap it apart. This will expose that uh, expanded polystyrene texture that we all know and love that comes in all of our packages and kind of make a very leaf-like texture once we're done with it. it. Gives us a good base to build on. This is embarrassing how long this takes. And there we go. Okay, so now break off a few small chunks of the sphere and make sure to snap off any pieces that are processed and cut like the outside of the sphere is. This doesn't really look like a tree, it's too processed and manufactured, and we want to get rid of it. So we want everything on these chunks to look like the internals of the sphere. I already cut a few just to get us started, and as you can see, the styrofoam comes in a variety of different textures, large and small, so it doesn't really matter which one you get, and for the sake of this, I'm going to use both just to show you that it's unnoticeable. Next, we're just going to cut the twigs to height and make sure they fit in the washer. So if it doesn't quite fit, you can always use more hot glue than I'm going to use, but just basically make sure it fits and cut the top off at the height that you would like. So base this on what minis you're using and what scale you're using. You might also have to trim off the bottom just to make sure everything sits level. Next, we're just going to hot glue the twig into the washer. You can take your time and do this neatly, but I cover my bases in flocking so it doesn't really matter too much. If you want it to look really realistic, maybe tease the hot glue out towards the edges of the washer to make it look like roots, but again, I don't bother, it's not too visible anyway. If you don't like how it turned out, you can always take snips and just cut off some of the extra hot glue. Now on to flocking. This is the flocking I use for on the actual tree. Uh, it's a very coarse flocking and I don't have a good color to it and I do that on purpose to make it look more varied. And mainly it's just made from pencil shavings that I steal from my mechanical pencil uh, sharpener or the one from work. Anywhere you can get them really, it doesn't really matter. So the first step in making this is you're just gonna wanna pour them into a disposable container. Uh, I just use solo cups for this because you can buy them in bulk and it's nice and easy. But now just add some paint. You can do whatever colors you'd like. If you want to go for a fall look, you can go for oranges and yellows. I chose green because it fits the board I'm currently making and I mix it with a little bit of burnt umber just to give it a more of an olive look and a little bit of a darker one. Just keep in mind that you have to match the flocking to whatever color you're basing the tree in at least semi-close. 
and you can always add more paint later in the process. Alright, now that that's done, take some paper towel and just spread it out and just dump all the flocking out and make sure it's spread as evenly as possible. Alright, now we'll leave that to dry. Alright, for the grass that's very similar, I just use a fine sawdust instead of pencil shavings. So this next part's nice and easy. All you want to do is take some of these styrofoam chunks we made earlier, make sure your hot glue gun's heated up, and just put a big glob on there. This is going to be the main construction, so you're going to want everything to stick together really nicely and take your time with it. Alright, once you have a lot, just press it onto the branch. And we're just going to do this a few more times, building up around the branch until very little of it is visible. Alright, so one thing to watch out for. Uh, strings of hot glue, fine. You might want to trim them off, but holes like this, you're going to want to plug because it's really hard to get paint down in there and then there's going to be visible white spots. So just take little chunks of styrofoam or just the singular pellets and make sure to plug those up. Alright, once you're happy with how it looks, just make sure you go around and double check for those holes. It's pretty important because it'll be really hard to clog once you paint it. So just go in, put a big glob of hot glue right in the hole, and then just press some styrofoam in. And we can go on to painting. So as a university student, I'm a firm believer of buying as little paint as possible, so for this I'm going to use three colors. Just a dark brown, a white, and the forest green, or pine green. We're going to start with the trunk of the tree, so just get some brown paint ready and just give a very thorough base coat. You can apply this very thickly. Don't worry too much about getting any brown on the tree itself. It's no big deal and we'll touch it up later. If you're using metal washers, just give it a few coats because it's really hard to get the paint to stick to metal or you can prime it first and make it a lot easier. You may want to let it dry upside down like this just so you don't get any paint touching the newspaper. Now grab it by the trunk or whatever area is dry, don't worry too much about the base if it's not quite dry. And we're going to mix up a nice olive green. So I'm just mixing about half and half burnt umber and pine green here. Make sure you make a lot of paint because you don't want to have to mix a new batch in the middle of painting. That can create some color inconsistencies. Now we're just going to give a solid base coat the same way we did with the trunk. Make sure you put on a really thick on the tree itself, that way you get in all those crevices and holes you might have missed. As you can see here, I missed a spot, so just be careful for those big white patches. And then we're just going to leave that to dry. Once it's dry, go ahead and take a small brush and get in the cracks between the styrofoam. Make sure you get any white patches you might have missed. You can also touch up the trunk by just cutting off any drips you might have had and touching it up with brown paint. Just be sure to be careful while doing this. Alright, next we're going to move on to dry brushing, and what dry brushing is, for those of you that don't know, is when you wipe most of the paint off your brush until you have a very fine layer, and use quick and gentle strokes to get kind of a highlight effect across the surface. So for the trunk, we're going to use a lighter shade of brown, and make sure to wipe everything off the brush, and then we're just going to do quick strokes and do a very similar effect on the tree itself, which you'll see in a bit. 
As you might see here, there are some areas I did miss when touching up, and you can always go back and touch up some more later. Next, we're going to mix up a slightly lighter shade of green. And make sure to wipe everything off. And then just do the same thing on the surface of the tree. Now, if this is your first time doing it, you're going to make mistakes. Uh, I make mistakes in this video. You can always touch it up with some of the darker color and come back and dry brush again once that's dried. So don't put too much pressure on yourself the first time you're doing this. And once it's dry, it will look a lot less bright. So it will be concerning, but don't worry too much. So once it's dry, we're going to be doing some flocking. The first step of flocking is just taking some of your tacky glue or any kind of PVA glue you have. I just find tacky glue works best and just giving the base a nice solid coat. Now just take a crappy paintbrush and just give it a wipe covering all the surfaces. You can even make some lines of white glue up the side of the tree if you want kind of a vine effect. And just make sure you don't have any white glue on the edge of the washer so that you don't have any grass coming over the sides. Now just take your grass flocking, which is your finer of the two. Put your tree in a disposable container you don't mind getting covered in glue and just dump it all over the base. You don't have to be neat with this, as long as your glue's in the right place, that's where your grass will stick. Now once your glue's had a bit of time to set, go ahead and mix up some of your tacky glue or PVA glue with a bit of water. And we're gonna create kind of a soupy mixture, but make sure it's still mostly glue. As you can see here, I use a very, very little bit of water because you don't want it to water down too much to the point where it's not sticky. Then just take your crappy paintbrush and mix it up. Once you have a nice mix, go ahead and take your tree and just paint it all over the green surfaces. Make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies. In a very similar fashion to the grass flocking, we're going to take our coarse flocking that we made earlier and just sprinkle it all over the tree. You might want to break it up a little bit with your fingers because when we paint it like that it can clump together, but just make sure to grind it in between your fingers and separate the individual shavings. You can always add more glue if you need to. And don't forget the top. Alright, once it's had time to dry, we can take a look. As you can see, there's still some white spots. Just take your time and make sure you touch those up before we seal this thing. Take it outside to seal it, and you can either use the Minnow Wax Polyurethane Sealer that I mentioned earlier, or PVA glue watered down and in a squirt bottle. Just make sure you get the grass and all the surfaces so that flocking really sticks.
And there you have it, guys. Feel free to take this design and make it your own. You can do different color schemes, different kinds of trees. You could do a black wash to give it more depth, but make sure to share your ideas with everyone else. This design is heavily inspired by Wylock over at Wylock's Armory, so feel free to go over there and give him a like. I'll have a link to his channel down in the description. Make sure to comment with what you'd like to see me build next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.